Okay, Dr. LaFleur, I just want to start off by saying thank you for being with us today. And I want to get a feel for why you want to be a congressman uh, for this first district. So can you tell me uh, what you would do to fix what is a broken Washington, um, a broken system of passing legislation and getting bills through? What would you do to fix it? Well, Eli, thank you so much for having me here today and for asking this question, because this is the most important question, is what's wrong with Congress and how can we make it better? Uh, and in fact, you know, it's never been as bad as it is now. These last, uh, really, two years uh, with the uh, a whole bunch of Tea Party incumbents came in, and they decided that they basically were not going to make any kind of compromise. They signed the Grover Nordquist pledge instead of pledge to the United States of America, they're pledged never to raise taxes as their primary goal. Well, this is run right in the face of what President Barack Obama is trying to do to move our country forward. And so what we got was paralysis. And I think it's time to get somebody there with common sense instead of just saying that their idea of compromise is you do it my way. That, that's not compromise. That doesn't work. So we've got to get Congress working again for the better of the country. And you talk about bringing someone in with common sense. What experiences do you have? What, what is on your resume mm -hmm. that will help fix Washington? Well, I've been a doctor for 40 years. I've, I've done, uh, during that time, not only taking care of patients, but I was a teacher. I was a researcher. I've done administrative work. I run a small business. Uh, I got a master's in public health in addition to my doctorate. And I've delivered 5,000 babies in my life. So I think that all these experiences together give me a pretty good handle on what it takes to uh, be a good congressman. Now, uh, we're, at, we're at a college right now, Salisbury University. Mm -hmm. So I want to ask you, for students, what can you do or what will you do that will help students, especially when it comes to uh, fin financial issues, whether that be paying off high student loans or even helping them to find work in a struggling economy? Well, first of all, let me congratulate you and all the others for being here and for trying to get, get uh, advance your careers by studying. Uh, it's been shown over and over again that getting a college degree is the best thing you can do to improve your chances of success in life. And success is not measured just in terms of financial success, but in uh, really enhancing the quality of your life because of all the things that you learn while you're at college. So it's a great thing to do. Uh, so how can we help that along? Well. For one thing, uh, we have uh, financial aid in terms of uh, Pell Grants, and these have been expanded greatly under President Barack Obama, and I think we need to continue uh, that program. Uh, in addition, uh, as far as student loans, there are several ideas that can be uh, brought into play to make it more, um, uh, let's say, user-friendly for the student. Uh, one is that uh, if you get banks out of the middle, and now uh, the student will be making loans directly from the government instead of going through the banks. Why is that good? Well, the banks were basically taking none of the risk but getting all of the profit. And they got billions of dollars from the government because of these loans were guaranteed and even when students would default. So that's one thing, is get banks out of the middle. Uh, another thing is to put caps on the amount that you need to repay in any given year based on your income for that year to say, okay, over a certain percent, you don't have to pay any more than that. So you know you're not going to just totally go broke paying loans. And also to put a cap on the number of years that you pay back, say something like 20 or 25 years, whatever it is, that after that, uh, you're done, no matter. As long as you've been making payments right along and haven't defaulted, or then, then you're done. So I think these things will help. Uh, of course, what's really going to help in the long run is getting the economy running better so that you have jobs to get to when you get out. Uh, but you know, even in a tough economy, there are a lot of really great businesses that were started when the economy was in bad situation. So it takes ingenuity and hard work and sometimes a little luck. All right. And, you know, this first district uh, where you're running is a tough place to win for Democrats. Of course, Frank Craddaville did it a few years ago, but then lost his reelection. Why in a heavily red district do you think you can pull off a victory? Sure. Well, that's a very wise, uh, insightful question, uh, Eli. And, let me just say, if you go back far enough, um, that in fact, the first district was uh, Democratic more than Republican. And so what that tells me is that it can go back that way someday. We have to work toward that goal. And when you say it's heavily red, I like to say that the first district is not red or blue, but purple. And 
it's purple because a lot of folks out here uh, are very independently minded. They think for themselves, and they vote for the person rather than the party. They uh, are thoughtful and will, um, I think, can be persuaded if you have a good argument uh, and, they're, uh, and you're a good candidate, you can, you can win in spite of the, the R's and the D's. Now, obviously, Hurricane Sandy hit the shore pretty hard, and you know we were not immune to that here on the eastern shore at places sure. like Ocean City. How do you think, if at all, it will affect voting? In this district? Sure. Well, obviously, we lost a couple of days of early voting, uh, but worse than that, we lost uh, property and we lost some lives. And so, uh, you know, that's pretty tough. But uh, I'm really impressed at the resiliency of our population, and we're going to bounce back. And uh, already, just walking around here at Salisbury University today, walking around the campus, it looks like nothing ever happened. So that's really great, to, very, very good to see. Um, because there, it happened right when early voting was supposed to be going on, we lost a couple of days, and I think you already know that it's been extended now. Uh, the hours, for instance, uh, are extended till 9 p.m. It was supposed to end at 5 or 6 p.m. Uh, and another day has been added on, that's this Friday. We were not gonna have early voting on this Friday, now we do. So uh, I think that there's ample opportunity for people who are gonna vote to get to the polls, and I certainly would encourage everybody uh, to go vote. And if I may, I want to ask you about two specific uh, questions that will be on the ballot this November and ask you about your position and okay. a reason for that. And the first one would be the Maryland Dream Act. Mm -hmm. um, I want to get your stance on that and why you feel is the way you do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, of course, this is a Maryland state uh, referendum, and so uh, this is not something that as a congressman I would have to deal with. But as an individual citizen of Maryland, of course, I have to decide how to vote. And uh, I come down in favor of voting for the Dream Act. I think that if you look at all the uh, 10 or 11 states that already have similar statutes, ours is actually stricter than any of them. And it really is for, it's going to apply to just uh, people who uh, were brought here uh, against their knowledge or will uh, when they were children and their parents have been here and they've been paying uh, in state, they've been paying taxes uh, and they've uh, graduated from Maryland uh, high schools. And I think it's only fair that these kids who, no fault of their own that they're here, uh, that they have the same chance as the kids sitting next to them. Uh, so I, I think it, it sounds fair to me. I don't think it's really taking anything from anyone else. So I vote, I would personally would vote in favor of it, but that's not my, my call to make. Right. Yeah. And another uh, local thing that we'll be voting on, but that may eventually become a national issue or go before the court is the equal mm -hmm. marriage. Uh, question and I want to get your stance on that as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, this of course has been very controversial for years and uh, we have seen I think a trend as uh, over the years of more uh, open-mindedness about uh, the rights of people who are gays and lesbians. Uh, I personally have people in my family who are gay and I love them very much and it seems to me like they're just like anybody else. So. I'm in favor of marriage equality. I think that uh, the government should s stay out of the question about who you choose to love and let people decide for themselves. And then I, w I want to just, uh, I want to ask you, what do you want the people to know about you? What do you want the people of Salisbury University, the people of the Eastern Shore, the people in the first dis district to know about you as a person and as a candidate? Well. Uh, I want them to know that I'm, I live here on the Eastern Shore as opposed to my opponent who lives just north of Baltimore. Uh, so I'm much closer to you physically. And what that means is really that I'm part of the community and part of the culture of the shore. And I may have a, be able to be more in touch with uh, the specific issues that are here. For instance, uh, the quality of uh, water in the bay, for example. And I think our, our current congressman doesn't seem to care that much about it because he votes for the businesses that continue to pollute. Um, so uh, I think what I'd like them to know is that I'm uh, willing uh, to uh, think about all sides of an issue, but that I will use basic science and basic reason and fairness uh, and try and be uh, uh, straightforward and use common sense in my judgments to move forward. Uh, unlike my opponent, who uh, we're both physicians, by the way, but he votes no on so many progressive ideas. I actually call him Dr. No. So. I would, I would say to the public, Dr. No has to go. All right, and thank you again very much for coming and talking with us today, Dr. LeClaire.
thank you for the opportunity.